Hello, I'm Frank Saratella. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm a miracle. I'm supposed to be dead. Jesus gave me a second chance in life in 2012 when a doctor told me I was supposed to be dead when they closed the express was in Chicago to pull me out of my truck. In 1984, Jesus changed my life. If you'd like to read my testimony, click on the link below, amidnightcry.com. That's my website. On it, you will find my testimony. You will find that I've got books that are published that are both on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And you'll find um, videos, you'll find study tools, all in helping you walk closer with the Lord. For those of you who are returning to my channel, I just want to thank you for your support. Um, I've never really done videos this close together before, but um, the Lord just showed me something, and I really felt compelled to do this. Um, in reading this morning, I noticed there is a trend and the trend was when God sent his prophets, he sent his prophets to his own people. He didn't send his prophets to the outlying or enemy nations, but Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and all the minor prophets were always sent to God's people. And why were they sent to God's people? Because God's people were going astray. They were following other gods and other idols. So the question I ask is, where are the prophets today with modern Christianity and easy believism? The foundation that we have missed and we've been lied to from the pulpits, ladies and gentlemen, is God gave us a foundation in the first five books, starting in, starting in Genesis, but then it really was emphasized in, e in Egypt when God pulled his people out of Egypt into the wilderness. And then from the time they left Egypt, God continued to show us the rebellion that they had towards him. God continued to show us how they lost their way. And when Moses went up to the mountain, what did the children of Israel do? They built a gold calf. And they had a feast, or in some translations it says a festival. Ladies and gentlemen, again, remember, Israel had no history to look back on. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and Paul tells us that these were examples for us, and we have not learned from these examples. When did it change? The religious system has replaced loving Jesus with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength with just believing in Jesus. And when you read the Old Testament, you will see that all through the Word of God, God was commanding His people to return to Him with their whole heart. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, I believe it is, or maybe it's 5, when it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, God alone. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not changed. God alone is supposed to be our God. We are supposed to have no, that's the very first commandment. You shall have no other gods before you. And what has happened in modern Christianity is we have multitudes of gods, many gods. And the biggest god with people in Christianity today is their church or their religion, their ministry. God commands us to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. There are going to be multitudes of Christians that are going to stand before Jesus and say, Lord, Lord, and Jesus is going to say, I do not know you. Terrifying words to people that believe in Jesus, but do not love Jesus. And that's what this message is about, ladies and gentlemen. We are moving very quickly, very soon, into a time of unprecedented judgment on America. But more importantly, it's going to be more important that the judgment that God is going to bring on Christianity today, because God is tired of the hypocrisy. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. I continue to repeat this in my videos only because it needs to be emphasized. We print 100 million Bibles every year, and we can't get along with people because they, they believe different. They have different doctrines. And Paul, in the first book of Corinthians, talks about having unity. And when you read the epistles, he talks about unity. Not compromise, but unity on all levels. 
That's why the whole church system is an abomination before God, because it's a congregation of compromise. It is supposed to be unified in the Word of God. Thy Word is truth, Jesus says. And Christians today, and churches today, and ministries today are cherry-picking the Word of God because they don't want to offend people. Ladies and gentlemen, that is completely contrary to the Word of the living God. Jesus says we are to live by every word of God, not pick and choose. The gospel is a gospel of death to self, dying daily to your wants, your needs, your desires, to fulfill the love and humility and, and compassion of Jesus, to have his desires fulfilled in our lives. We're supposed to be lights, not hypocrites. We're supposed to be epistles. Ladies and gentlemen, the hour is late, and God is calling us to a place of repentance, a place of change that is unprecedented because God's heart is broken. Multitudes of Christians that are waiting for a rapture, multitudes of Christians that think they're okay, they're at ease in Zion. Multitudes of Christians, th Christians think they are rich and increased in good, but they don't know that they are poor and wretched and naked. Ladies and gentlemen... This is another call, another wake-up call for all of us. You need to start asking the Lord to show you your hearts. Get it through your heads, ladies and gentlemen. Understand this. The Word of God is very clear, and God is not going to bend His Word for you or me or anybody. Unless we have pure hearts, we don't see God. Period. And all this garbage about, well, God doesn't see your sin, He only sees Jesus. That's a lie right from the pit of hell. He does see your sin. He that makes the eye, does he not see? He that, he that ear, makes the ear, does he not hear? He that gives man knowledge, does he not know? God sees it all. God is re, God is waiting. He is being long-suffering. And the word long-suffering in Greek actually means to restrain. he's restraining his anger. He is restraining his anger because he's waiting for people to bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Not pay him lip service, but pay him the homage and the love and the fear that he is due. And that means change. Repentance is change. The Word of God says, because they do not fear God, they have no change. And sure, people don't have to change with this easy believism, easy believism garbage that's being fed to us. That you can be all you want to be, and all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you will be saved, and all your sins, past, present, and future are forgiven. It's all a lie, ladies and gentlemen. You need to understand something. You're going to stand before God all alone just like I am, and you don't want to be wrong. Your doctrine better be a doctrine of holiness and self-denial and putting to death the deeds of the flesh and crucifying the flesh with its passions and desires because those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with their passions and desires. And let this mind be in you, the mind that was in Jesus, that he who suffers in the, sin, he who suffers in the flesh will die to sin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a wake-up call. It's a call of urgency. Very soon, the judgment of God is going to be unleashed on America and on the Christian community. And God is saying, enough, get your hearts right. I mentioned this before in the last video. America's had 62 million abortions since 1973. And God is heartbroken, absolutely. But he's more heartbroken about the spiritual abortions that have been taking place it for years in the church system where people think that they're going to heaven and they're going to die and go to hell because they had this believing in Jesus. Well, it's interesting because the Word of God says this, you believe in Jesus, you believe, you do good. Even the demons believe and they tremble. And if you look at modern Christianity today and you look at what's going on behind pulpits today and you watch ministries today, People do not fear the Word of God. They do not fear God. They don't tremble at His presence. They're not humble before God. Ladies and gentlemen, eternity is on the line, and you do not want to be wrong. The gospel is a gospel of fearing God and loving Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. It's not a gospel of believing. Believing comes from love. You don't get believing and then love. You have to love first, and then believing comes next. If you take a, take a child, and I encourage every one of you who have little children, ask your child, do you believe in daddy? Do you believe in mommy? And they'll look at you like you got six heads. What do you mean believing? What do you mean have faith? But if you ask the child, do you love me? They'll say, of course, you're my daddy, you're my mommy. Foundation 
of Christianity as love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Why do you think the Apostle Paul, who is our example as Jesus is, was able to go through all that he went through being whipped five times with a cat of nine tails, 39 times, being beaten with rods three times, being stoned one time, spending a day and a night in the deep in perils of brethren, in perils of, the, of, of enemies. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul was able to do all those things through love for his Savior. And I can promise you, John MacArthur, Jimmy Swag, at all, Jim, uh, uh, Charles Stanley, they're not going to endure all of that for Jesus, for their love for Jesus. They'll all fold like a house of cards, just like Peter did. And that's why Peter was warned. You're going to deny me, Peter. And Peter said, no, Lord, I'm not going to deny you. And Jesus said, Peter, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as sweet. But I have prayed that after you return, you will strengthen the brethren. And I'm sure Peter was thinking, what does he mean after I return? I ain't going anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we all have the heart of Peter. And we need to search our hearts and ask the Lord to expose the secret sins in our heart. To show us our heart the way he sees our heart, not the way we think we are. Because what's about to take place, I can promise you, I guarantee it. There's many of you who are going to look at this video and say, this guy's out of his mind. Many of you are going to watch this video and say, this is not going to happen to me. Many of you are going to watch this video and say, I'm okay, my walk with God is all right. And when God unleashes judgment, you're going to have no peace. You're not going to understand where you're going to go, what you're going to do. And you're going to be saying, Lord, Lord. And he's going to say, when I called you, you refused to answer. And I will laugh at your calamity. Ladies and gentlemen, now is a time to forsake everything and forsake all of your sin and seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Die to yourself. Die daily. Give up your sin. Do you not know that in the word of God it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord God is the death of his saints. It's not dying and laying in some casket. It's showing the Lord that we love him by denying ourselves and taking up our cross and dying to our sin suffering the flesh and cease from sin that's what's precious in the lord and the, the sight of the lord seeing that we will sacrifice our loves for jesus as jesus sacrificed his life for us ladies and gentlemen please i'm begging you please take stock eternity's on the line you do not want to be wrong we're all going to stand before jesus ladies and gentlemen and then you will find out that your religion being a catholic being a baptist a presbyterian there's no religion in the bible it's the people that walk with God, the people that are hypocrites with God, and then all the other nations, the heathen nations. Now the time is now is the time the Lord is calling for his bride to come out from among them and be separate and touch not what is unclean. And then I will welcome you unto myself, and I will be your God, and you will be my children, saith the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, please take heed to this warning. Things are going to start getting crazy. Please search your hearts, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. It's impossible to love Jesus too much, but you will die and go to hell if you do not love him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Have a blessed day and please, 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 it is more important for you to let God talk to you in his word than you talk to God in praying. You do not want to be destroyed for your lack of knowledge of what's in God's Word. And more importantly, you do not want to be destroyed for your lack of knowledge of the sins in your heart, the secret sins. Thank you and good night.